last we started the chapter on um, reactive building blocks last Saturday, and um, I'm, I'm sure we all saw the recording. And uh, for this particular session, we'll finish off this chapter. And then, um, so like I've said, we'll take a break uh, for next weekend, and then we'll proceed the following weekend. So about isolating um, code. So we learn about two, fun two functions, observe events and reactive events. And um, so these two are part of the isolate function. So we can, the somewhat equivalent to isolate function, we'll see that in a few minutes. So these two functions allows us to access values in reactive without taking a reactive dependency on them. And how do we write that function to achieve that? So we have this example of an app where um, so we have two, we have got two inputs. Yes, so three inputs. We have the lambda one, lambda two, n, and a simulate that will allow us to populate a histogram. And uh, so in the server, we have got this event, event reactive. So here we can see that um, the x1 is depending on the simulate, the simulate um, placeholder in the UI, and then you have got the n and lambda one and the difference is with lamb with x2, it's now lambda 2 instead of lambda 1. And we'll then generate a render plot. We'll then generate a histogram using the render plots. And particularly, we'll use the frac only function to do that. So if we run this particular app, So here we have the lambda two and lambda one is three and lambda two is five. And then we're simulating 10,000 times. So if we click simulate, we see uh, the polygon has been created and here we're using the freq poly function. So basically um, in this is that it is only We have got a dependence, a reactive dependency on simulate alone. I, I, I think, yeah. If anyone has more input to that, please, by all means, inform us. So we have seen that example. So here, using this event reactive, it creates a new reactive and we have two arguments in it. So we have one that depends on this and the second one, it runs this. So here we see that for example, for X2, we have the input simulates. So it is uh, depending on this and then it is running. So it's running the, um, creating a Poisson distribution where we know that Poisson distribution depends on two parameters, so N and Lambda. So, and this is the case here. So these are the two functions, the event reactive and um, observe event are powered by using the isolate function. And this function, what it does, it separates access from dependency. It also executes the expression in a scope where the reactive values can be read. And you wish, if you wish to know more about, you can just run this question mark and then the function to isolate, then you'll see more about that. And thirdly, it reduces the time the reactive grass is invalidated. So we have this example from the book. So let me, let me stop this. So we have this example from the book. We have the reactive values and we learned last week that reactive values function, it, it holds a, a list. So hence we have got the count is equals to zero, assigning that an object equals to zero and x is equals to one. And we have 
the observe function where we learned that observe function it it's like it's creating something new and here we have so we want the r to to the r it's it has got two values so it has x and count and particularly for count we want it to isolate to isolate using isolate function we have got this um this particular argument here then plus one so what this does it's that if we if we exclude this particular function you will notice when you run this particular code you'll notice that it will keep on running in an infinite loop but if we use the isolates it's it will revert that so if we run this particular function so i had run the r so you can see this is run it and see it But if we have we have we had removed this particular isolate, it will keep on running. So let's say the R um, X six, saying it to one, and then we say R X again. We are saying it to two. So we can two, and now we run the R plus and count to. Is returning a zero. Previously, it had returned a two. Okay. Um, so we have got the R, which is creating a function using the reactive val. And I think I had already run, yes, to the Broughton error. I didn't say the reactive console is equals to true. And we have this. Okay, what if we just run this? Right. And um, so if we remove this isolate. Okay, I'm not so sure why it is happening. I previously it had returned output to when I was reading this particular part. Did anyone run this example in their own R? So I say Brenda, no, Federica and Oyedele and um, Enrique, if you. I did not. Okay. And Federica, yeah. did anyone just run it and expected a different result? Then, because previously I'd run it and it was returning two, so I was assuming it, it's read so it's the one and then plus this two. I hadn't even run this, so I, I I run only this particular one. And in my, uh yes, <laughs> yes, Federica, you want to say something? Sorry. No, I said um. This is uh, um, uh, a piece is is taken from from any particular app. Yeah. This okay. Can 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 we go back to the the the, the whole code? So the, the the app to to see to see it inside the the app. Sorry, actually, this is just like a standalone example that I was given in the book. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Page 28. So you use isolate to, um, to make it's sure that, that you use just this, uh, the, um, the vector that you selected without uh, adding other things to that uh, that vector in a way that maybe can be updated with the extra additions 
So you isolate in a way that you preserve that vector in a way uh, as is, basically. Mm -hmm. So what this isolate function, according to the book, it says that it allows you to access the current value of a reactive value or expression without taking any dependency on it. Yeah. So you make sure that the vector stays like, uh, as is, even if when you add extra information, it doesn't update itself, it stay isolated. So in a okay. way that but um it, it, this is to make sure this in a way it's a way to say that this is to make sure that you don't change basically the the, the data from you um, that you start with mm -hmm. and it stays isolated and okay. that would uh i um i think uh, um that 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 is uh, uh, that would be nice to see inside and out, basically. Because that would be, yeah, yeah. Um, I, unfortunately, I wouldn't know how to place this in an app, <laughs> so I was just taking the example as they are from the book. But I, I get your point. So here we had uh, previously a, um, assigned the count, so they're using this to so be a function r. And then you're using the count to be always zero and x to be always one. So since we have um, using the isolate function, it will return the original values as they are if we include the isolate function. So hence why if we say r unless dollar sign count, it will always return as zero, even if we assign it a different value. Is that so? So if we say let's say this, say this change it to two. Then we run the x again. Oh, why do you have? Okay, now, now I'm a bit lost. Because you isolate inside the mm -hmm. uh, the app inside the because you are using ah, yes. uh, the observe. Okay, yes, 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 so yes, you yes. are looking at this this vector uh, r count. And you make sure that uh, that would be isolated from any other inputs. So anytime you look at it, you go, uh, you you search for it. It stays like that. It it doesn't. Uh, you, you just make sure that you you it doesn't get. Um, it's, it's a bit difficult to to say because I might say incorrectly. But uh, it, it's a um, um, procedure, or it's a, like a guideline. It, it, it's not that uh, you are um, obliged to do that. It's not compulsory, but uh, uh, it's better uh, to use, to isolate uh, the vector under these conditions, because this way you make sure that uh, uh, your starting point stays fixed. OK. Uh, always uh -huh. like like resetting uh, to start, okay. It, it doesn't. Uh, there, there was something in the in the book. Um, give, um, I, I'll be back to you with this. Okay. Okay. I I hope it makes sense. <laughs> to yeah. All right. So we'll hear more from Federica in a short while. Okay, so we'd like to have said the, in this using this event reactive, it says we're saying that let's depend on this particular argument and then we run this argument. So if you follow this code, event reactive, it calls bind event. That is bind event basically saying that, so event reactive, it's like equivalent to saying reactive depend on this and then isolate and run this. So um, it means that if I understand correctly, it will um, it will be accessing that current value of the reactive value and not change. So I think if we change it, it will depend on that original value. I'm a bit lost. This was a very hard chapter, <laughs> let's say. Okay. Um, 
So again, this is just a summary of what I've said. So if you're using the event reactive, so we're saying X is, we depend on this and then we run this. So this is equivalent to saying that if you run the reactive X and then isolate Y. And similarly, if you're using the observe event uh, function with arguments X and Y, so again, it is you observe to depend on this and then you run this, uh, the Y. So depend on X and then run Y. And this is equivalent to saying observe X and isolate Y. Yeah. Um, can, can I show you something? Um, yes, please. I can stop sharing. Do I stop sharing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, if I remember correctly, and now he said here, so basically he does a, an example without isolate. You see mm -hmm. that here, isolate is not uh, um, used. Instead, yeah. in this second example, it, there is isolate. So he said, you, you can do it basically without using isolate. But then it can happen that in the, um, the, there is an app um, that shown this this behavior. Um, basically, the, um, uh, the input that you give uh, without isolate uh, will uh, let the, the the function uh, um, uh, entering a loop without stopping itself. So with isolate, you uh, apparently you you solve the problem. So the, this function allows you to access the current value of a reactive value uh, without taking dependencies of it. So you isolate the input in a way that doesn't get involved in, into a loop. Um, I think that there's um if I remember correctly. Um, there is a uh, app which uh, um, shows you uh, what is it? I I'll have a look in the meantime. Okay, um, I'll stop sharing. Okay, uh, thank you. That is helpful. Okay, I, and then now we moving to the next uh, section. It's on time invalidation. And here we will learn a new function called invalidate, invalidate later function. And here, so um, again, like uh, what Federica is saying, it's that using isolate, it reduces the time. The reactive graph is invalidated. So here, um, with this, so we have got this particular, so we have, it's, so we're looking at now the server, the server part of an app where we have the inputs, output and session. And so here a timer is invalidated every 500 milliseconds because we have got this reactive timer 500. So it says that. And so looking at uh, a, how is this possible? So we, if we run, so for this X1 object, we put reactive. So of course we want it to be a reactive element. So what will happen is that we'll have a new X1 and a new X2 that resembled each and after every 500 milliseconds. So another question we can ask ourselves is what if sampling X X1 took longer than the 500 milliseconds. Yeah, um, I am not sure about that, but we can copy this. And putting this up. Save and run there. We have must be at least okay. 
So basically, if I understand correctly for the X1 and X2, we want that if it goes after every 500 milliseconds, a new uh, random a new random um, item value is added. Okay. So then using the invalidate, uh, invalidate later function ms, so this is in milliseconds, it allows the programmer to invalidate a node in the graph after every um, the milliseconds. And uh, so this was mentioned in the book that it is useful for creating animations and connecting data sources outside of Shiny's reactive framework that may change over time. So in, in case we will be um, in the future working on, on such, you can always review this chapter to make your work easier. So here we have an example that we are creating a cumulative sum. And um, so this uh, example adds a new random number to a sum every af once after every 300 milliseconds. So if we run that. So I did run this, but I was not so sure. So if we say sum. So sum two. I, I don't see any outputs. I, I don't know if you are expected to see an output. Okay, so let's try and let's... Okay, um, Federica shared with us a link to a solution on the chat. Yeah. So this function sum, it is an adding a new random. So I understand that the sum comes in. So we want that after every 300 milliseconds, a new value is, a new random value is added. And we have some, so we are we want it to return to its original value without causing any dependency. Um, so does okay if does is some meant some meant to re, to re, to return an output is if you see some. It just returns the reactive value zero. Okay. Because these are no functions that can be, um, so it's, it's difficult to uh, work with this function uh, within pieces, so separately, isolated, <laughs> like using them isolated from from the rest of the app, you know, because they 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 work like like a building blocks within uh, within each other. So yeah. um, the, the 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 sum is assigned. So reactive val zero is assigned to the the, the name of sum, and that th that's fine. But then the observe function is used by itself and it's supposed to supposed to be used inside a, a pipe or inside another function um, in the in the app okay now if if you want to have a look at this function itself observe with the invalidation um I'm not sure it releases. Um, so that, that's for, for you to, I think that we can, um, like you, uh, there is an addition of the, the random uniform and that's okay, no? Yeah. Then you isolate the sum in a way that when you do the summation, you sum, the, 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 the sum is preserved. So it will be always, always stay like that. It doesn't update, it doesn't change it. Then you add extra thing. 
Um, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so this is a note that the invalidate letter function runs from the time it is invoked. So when we combine it with the on.exit function, it ensures that the node is invalidated on a fixed time after the code's computation completes. So we have an example here. So this example, it's we are basically using the reactive function to reread a CSV file. Yeah, for every one second after you finished reading it. So again, like how Federica is um, informing us is that most of these functions will make sense if you input, if you are running like a complete app. So and then we have got other additional tools. This is the reactive poll and reactive file reader functions, which are built on invalidate later. So and then we are told to be aware of the accuracy of timing may be affected by other processes. Yeah, so these, um, if you want to read more about reactive poll and reactive file reader, there are two other subsections in the book called polling and long, long running reactives. Yeah, um, they can be helpful. So a summary is that, so in, in this chapter, we have learned about the building blocks that make Shiny work. So this is the reactive values, reactive expressions, the observers and time evaluation. So after we are done with this, we'll now combine reactive values and observers that allows us to escape some of these constraints for better or worse of the reactive graph. And now that brings us to chapter 16 on escaping the graph. I must say this was one of the most challenging chapters I've read. <laughs> in this particular book. Um, forgive me if I wasn't that, uh, I didn't, I wasn't that elaborative in explaining uh, this. Trust me, I was thinking as well. Yeah, yeah it's difficult. But you know, uh, practice is gold. Yeah. Uh, I found this example. I'm not, uh, not, so not sure if it's correct, but it says uh, isolate demo. So, um uh, try to see um if we can through the link we have shared yeah this this uh the, in the chat okay let me open that okay yes you are saying um uh, it says uh n here in the slider is isolated. Mm -hmm. um, while the text is, is, it is not. So if you scroll a bit down, so we heard a bit like a look at the code. Yes. And there's, um, so this is the server. We have a tab with the server and a tab with the UI. So the mm -hmm. isolate function, okay, if you, uh, it's in the server, uh, just, uh, okay, it's down here. Uh, so um, you see there's um, the, the input, so it, like the, the, the things that we, we, we saw before. So the input, uh, is isolated, so isolate the input, the n. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So let, let's see how it works in this app. Yes. So we input a text, say cohort three. Mm -hmm. Let me click go. Why? What if if we will uh, um, move this 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 line? Yeah? This slider, okay. Then go. So it's saying. Um, it's okay. So that's Sorry. that's isolated. Um, so if we just look at the comment, so this is for the text, it's saying that here they isolate. So this is a reactive object. So this reactive object, sorry, will not take a dependency on it. So that means that changes to the N will therefore not trigger a re-execution. So since we have changed this particular N and then click go when they say re-execution it means that the text is not affected is that so i'm not, I'm not sure that that's not the best example i think okay. uh, because we you cannot see the reactive things that you are preventing with isolation oh. okay there was a, an, a, an app that uh, that uh, uh, we, we talked about these things and the, I think someone has uh, shown us um, a, an example yeah uh, on slack you mean on slack Okay, um, so I can, so please review the links Federica has shared with us on the chat for us to understand the better about the isolate and um, isolate function among the functions you have learned today. So I'll stop sharing and um, that is all I had for the last part of this chapter. So uh, Brendan, we were thinking of taking a break for next weekend. So that so on third on third September, sorry, we don't have a session and meet again on tenth. Are you in agreement? Because Federica and Orlu are okay, and Enrique I think is also okay. I haven't. Okay, all right. I can see you nodding. So that's perfect. Yep, that works for me. Uh, um sorry but i'll just uh, um, um i share something uh, again because uh you know when when we talked then it, it looked like that we had the things written here so in this example changing n will not result in an update to the summary text My Jack Russell. Okay. So, and then he said, so if we change N, uh, this um, will not result in an update to the summary text because it is always used within, within isolate on the server. And then says, however, changing text or clicking on the button. Will result in the summary text updating because when input text and input go back 
open are accessed, it is not inside isolate, so they are not isolated. Mm. And the summary text are the two outputs we see, like summary one and summary two. Mm -hmm. So basically, I change the text. Mm -hmm. But uh, n stays uh, uh, fixed. Mm -hmm. Instead, I can change n. Changing n will not result in an update to the summary text. OK. So they are isolated. So basically, it's isolation. So I can change n. And I have the time to change this as well. Because when uh, you put it in, in, a, in the same observe function to calls, so when you change one, the other one updates as well. This way, yeah. n is isolated. So we can like scroll this down and have the text fixed or changing the text. And uh, while n stays uh, fixed, so they they enough. This it's one of those isolated because if you fix one, the other one can be left as is. Okay, all right. Thank you. That seems the understanding. <laughs> Ah, and always thank you so much, Federica, for the examples that you always share with us. Yeah, I, I know you have done this book before, so your input is always valuable. Okay, so I, I think with that, we can call uh, the, the discussion to an end, and we can meet on 10th September. I, I wish everyone a good time, and we'll meet then. Okay, bye. Great, thanks, Lisa. Bye.